This is 6.8a of geometry. So we're going to look at shapes on a graph again, but now we're going to look at it without any labels on our axes. So we're going to use letters instead. So looking at this picture, what I want you to see is that it depends where we put our shape um, will affect how hard or easy it is for us. So like if you look at this first one, they have A, B, C, D, and E all in there, right? So they're using five letters, whereas like this one is using only three letters, as is this one only using three letters, right? So where you put it is going to make it easier or harder for yourself to calculate different things like the distance and the midpoint. So here's a couple examples of labeling them. Let's just look at this square. So, it tells us that um, the side is 2A. So, this whole thing is 2A. And it says that the axes bisect each side. So, remember, bisect means splits into two. So, this is A and this is A. And it's a square, so all sides are 2A. So, that means each of these parts are A. Which also means if we look this direction, right, that this is A, and looking this way, this must also be A. We can also label that A and that A. Okay, so we're going to start at the origin at 0, 0. Okay, if I move to the right, right to this point, I'm going to move to the right A. So my x is changing, my y won't. So my y is still going to be a 0, but I move to the right a. So my x-coordinate then is an a. And then if I move up from there to this vertex, the corner, the vertex, if we're moving up, our y is going to change. So our x will still be the same, our a, our x will still be a, and we're moving up a. So then our y-coordinate is also a. If we look at this, go back to the, this point right here, and let's move down to this vertex. So if we're moving down, that's our y changing again, so our a is still our x-coordinate, and we're moving down a, so this y-coordinate is negative a. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side, so let's start back at the origin again. If I move to the left to get here, I'm moving to the left, so my x is changing. My y will still be 0. And I went to the side. Oops. That's still 0. I went left a. If I'm going left, that's negative. So my x-coordinate is negative a. So negative a, 0. And then if I move down to this vertex, down, remember, is changing your y. So my x will be the same, so I'll still have negative a. And if I go down, that's negative a as well. So if I go back to this point here, and I go up a, this point, the vertex there. Remember, up changes our y, so my x is still negative a. And if I go up a, then that's a positive a. Okay, let's try this rectangle here. We're told that the rectangle has a height of a and the length is 2b and it says the y-axis bisects EC and RT so it splits it in two. This whole thing is 2b so that means each of these are b. b, 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 and b. So if these are a that means this middle one is also a. So remember our origin 0, 0. If I move to the right to this point, this vertex, Moving to the right changes my x, so my y is still 0. If I go to the right, b, then my x-coordinate is b. And if I go up from here to this vertex, vertex c, remember, up changes your y. So my x will still be b, and I went up a, so my y-coordinate is a. Let's go back to the origin, and this time we're going to go to the left. 
So again, left is changing the x. So my y is still 0. And I went to the left, b. So my x coordinate is negative b. And now I'm going to go up to this vertex. And up changes the y. So my x will still be negative b. And I went up a. So when you go up in y, that's positive. So I, my y coordinate is a positive a. Alrighty, and let's try this kite. It says that I, E, this whole thing here, is 2A. And it says that the X axis bisects I, E, so it splits it in two. So this is A, and this is A. Then it says K, O is B, so this is B, and O, T is C. So we're going to start at the origin, at 0, 0. Let's go up. So remember, when we're going up, we're going to change our y, so our x is still 0, and we went up a, so our y coordinate is a. Then looking at 0, 0, going back to the origin, let's go down. So going down, again, changes our y, so our x is still 0, but we went down a, so our y coordinate is negative a. Okay, go back to the origin. Let's go to the left this time. So this vertice. So if we're going to the left, that's changing our x. So our y is still 0. And if we went to the left, b, that means our x coordinate is negative b. Remember, going to the left is negative. Go back to the origin, and let's get this last vertice by going to the right. So when we go to the right, that's changing our x. So our y is still 0. And we went to the right, c. So our x coordinate is c. Okay, notice for a second that this would be a lot different and a lot easier than if we drew the kite like this, right? This would be B, A, A, C, right? To get all the way over to this vertex over here, we would have B plus C comma zero. And to get to this vertex up top, it would be B comma A. We'd have to go over B and up A. Right? So different points, or different places you put the um, points and the shape on the graph are going to change um, if it's harder, if it's easier, what it's going to be better for, that sort of thing. Okay, so we're going to look at this trapezoid here. So they tell us it's a trapezoid. They already graphed it for us and labeled it with letters. Um, and they ask, is it an isosceles trapezoid? Remember, an isosceles trapezoid has congruent legs. Those two would be congruent. So we need to see if those are the same length. So we're going to use the distance formula. Remember our distance formula, x2, oops, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, all under that square root. So I'm going to label this guy x2 y2, x1, y1. So, my x2 is a minus my x1 is b squared plus my y2 is 0 minus my y1, which is c. So, if I had switched them, I'd get c minus 0 here, so that might be a little easier, but both ways are going to get you the same answer. So, I'm not going to simplify this first parentheses, okay? Because we're going to work on the other side at the same time, and it's not going to be, then we don't have to do as much work. So plus 0 minus c is going to be a negative c, so this is negative c squared. Well, what is negative 2 squared? Negative 2 squared is a positive 4, right? Negative 3 squared is a positive 9, right? So 2 squared equals 4 and negative 2 squared equals 4. They're both going to get the same answers. So instead of writing it like this, with a negative c squared, I'm just going to change that to be a c squared. Okay, now I'm going to do the other distance formula. So I'm going to label this guy x2, y2, and x1, y1. It'll help if you label the same points the same, right? So label the top two the same. So my x2 is negative a minus my x1 is negative b and that's squared plus my y2 is 0 
minus my y1, which is c, all under that square root. So, in our first parenthesis, let's make those two negatives into a plus. And, look, this is exactly what we had in the other one. So this is end up going to end up being a c squared, right, with the same steps we took over here. So if these are going to be the same length, we've already, we're, they're both adding c squared. We need to know, is this a minus b squared the same thing as negative a plus b squared? So let's just try it with plugging in numbers. Over here, let's say that 5, a is 5 and b is 3. So it would be 5 minus 3, which is 2, and 2 squared is 4. If we go over here, we get negative 5 plus 3 which is a negative 2, and negative 2 squared is also 4, right? So here's what's actually happening with the algebra there. So we've got a minus b squared, right? And we've got this negative a plus b squared. I'm going to step back a step. I'm going to make this minus the negative b squared because it's going to be a little bit easier. So inside our parentheses, See how A has a negative and B has a negative? Let's, like, pull that negative out, okay? Let's undistribute that negative. So we're going to keep our parentheses, but we're going to stick another set of parentheses in there. I'm going to stick the negative outside. If I take the negative off the negative A, I'm just left with A. If I take away this negative, I'm just left with minus B. And if you're not sure if that's the same thing, watch this. Let's distribute it in, right? This will be negative A minus negative b, or plus b, right? So those are the same things. So check this out for a second then. Look at this guy and this guy, right? They're the same thing almost except for there's this negative in here. But negative 2 squared is the same thing as 2 squared, right? When we're squaring, it doesn't matter if we have a negative or not. So these are always going to be the same thing, no matter what numbers we plug in for a and b. Since we're squaring it, the negative is going to go away and they're always going to be the same. And there's your homework.